Hey everyone, welcome to Math 1314. It's going to be a 12 week algebra course. So it's super exciting. I'm your professor, Kelly Bennett, and I just wanted to walk you through how we're going to navigate the course and the technologies involved and expectations and kind of address some FAQs. So when you go to Blackboard and like click into our class, you're going to be directed to the page that says start here. And start here is really kind of a course orientation and FAQ. So how do I do this? What about this? What does this mean? Da -da 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 -da. So this is a great place to start or to revisit if you ever have questions. So I'm going to walk you through the three different technologies that we'll be using. The first one is Blackboard and we're already here. So Blackboard is where you're going to get your FAQs. We have on the syllabus and calendar tab you're going to have the syllabus, the course calendar, and then like a whole lot of stuff in a table. And you might be wondering, what is all this? I promise I'll get to that. I just want to walk you through the navigation really quick. And we also have first day handout and things like that. You also have a faculty profile tab that you can select. And that's just going to give you a picture of me and my email address, my Zoom room, and then when I have all of my office hours. So office hours is just an opportunity for you if you have a question and you want to talk about it. It can be math related. It could be um, general college related. It can be technology related. It's really just for you if you need a point of contact and anything regarding the class or San Jack. So I don't have all the answers to everything, but I think I'm pretty good at pointing people in the right direction. So um, definitely use office hours as much as you want. I just sit there and wait for people to show up. The next tab we have on Blackboard is textbook. So this is just going to link you to the textbook for the class, which is college algebra. And so from here you can um, download a PDF, order a hard copy if you like. I usually use it just on the web and I have a bookmark here. So I have algebra book. And then I just can navigate through the table of contents to whatever section I want to read or pull from. And this is totally free. So you don't have to pay for it unless you want a hard copy. The other tab we have here on Blackboard is My Open Math. So this will take you to myopenmath.com. And this is a platform where we're going to do all of our homework and exams. And it is also free. So you don't have to pay for that. In fact, I don't think you have to pay for anything except for tuition. Um, what else do we have? The last tab I want to talk about is announcements. You'll see it's blank here, but there'll be one soon by the time you watch this video. This is where I'm just going to make announcements like maybe I'll give you a reminder about the test or I might send you some helpful links. All announcements are automatically sent straight to your San Jacinto email address. Period. All correspondence is going to go to your San Jacinto email address. I'm not sending stuff to your Gmail. Everything goes to the San Jack email address. So please make sure you know how to access that. All right, so that is Blackboard and that's what's going to be on here. Your grades are going to be on here, but you'll see in a second that all this information that we just went over, it's also going to be in OneNote. So let's talk about OneNote a little bit. Everyone should have received an emailed link from me via Microsoft sharing a notebook with you. If you didn't get that link or deleted it or whatever, you can still access OneNote by going to office.com in your browser and then click sign in and use your San Jacinto email address and password to sign in. And you should be, see either in class notes or shared with me somewhere in there, it'll say math 1314-234 algebra anytime. So let's talk about OneNote a little bit. So once you get yourself into OneNote, you'll see that you have a personal folder where you're going to have class notes, projects, and exam written solutions. 
So class notes is going to be just for whatever you feel like keeping. If you want to keep like some links in there, whatever you want. OneNote is super cool. You can do images, you can embed videos, you can type text, you can draw. It's whatever you want and it's super easy. It's very drag and drop friendly. You're also going to have projects in here. So any sort of like longer written out assignment or project that I want you to do, you'll upload here. And then you also have exam written solutions. So this is where you're going to upload your exam written work. And yes, I will tell you more about that in a second. The other thing in OneNote that I think is useful is course info. So this is actually another place where you can find the FAQs. Um, you can find the calendar in here. You can find my contact info. You can find the syllabus. Um, you can get help if you need help with something on your computer. I think I've put together some good links here. And then there's also this MBG SLO thing, which I really have to talk about. But So this is kind of just an explanation of the grading scheme and how the class is graded and how work is assessed, etc. The other thing that's in OneNote is all the lecture notes. So we ha I'll have a page for every single lecture. So we'll see here that we have module one, two, three, four, and five. At the end of each module, you'll have a test. And so a good way to know what's going to be on the test is by looking at the notes that are associated with that module. There's also a teacher only section that won't be visible to you. And there's also a collaboration space, which is visible to everybody. So whatever you put in the collaboration space, everyone can see it and everyone can edit it. Your folder, only I can see that and only you can see that. So whatever you put in there is private between us. So let's talk about homework and exams and grades and the stuff that you really want to know about. How can you pass this class? So you're going to have to go over back to your browser and we can see here that on Blackboard, there's this number two, how do I register for the online homework platform, my open map. So there's a link here and you need to be mindful of this course ID and the enrollment key. So when you head over to myopenmath.com, if you already have a my open math account, you can go ahead and log in using your existing credentials and then add the course ID and enrollment key. If you're brand new to myopenmath.com, you're going to click uh, register as a new student and you're going to enter in your information, your name, your email address, all this other stuff. And then at the end of this profile creation, it's going to ask if you'd like to add a course, which you definitely do. So you want to add the course ID here and enrollment key. So those are highlighted in pink use them. Once you have enrolled in the class, you should see something like this. I see more as an instructor because, you know, I'm the instructor, so I get to see everything that's on the page. These assignments aren't available yet. They'll be available on the 21st of September, and then they will be visible to you. So these represent homework assignments, exam reviews, or exams. So homework assignments. These are going to be due, we can see, about a handful every week. So on the day that they appear in the calendar, that means that they are due at 11.59 p.m. that day. So for example, homework orientation and homework 1.4 polynomials, those are both due on Tuesday, September 22nd at 11.59 p.m. If for some reason throughout the course of the semester you're unable to meet a deadline for a specific homework assignment, you're allowed to use um, a late pass. So everyone has five late passes that will extend the homework deadline by a few days. You don't have to ask me to use them. There's no penalty to use them. Just use them as needed. Stuff's going to come up. So that's why they're there. You can start and stop your homework. Like if you want to work on a couple of problems and then take a break, you're welcome to kind of enter and exit the homework as many times as you want. You can attempt a problem as many times as you want up until the deadline is due. The exams. The exams must be taken 
on the day that they're posted, right? So we see here on Monday, October 5th, we have exam one. So it'll be open from 8 a.m. till 11.59 p.m. That doesn't mean that you have from 8 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. to take it. That means that you can start it at any time during the day. Once you start your exam, the timer starts and then it starts ticking down. So let's say you opened it up and you did two questions and you're like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. I really like a snack. And you like leave and you go make a snack and you come back 30 minutes later. That's fine. You, Mom will let you do that. But you lost those 30 minutes while you were snacking. So you want to complete it in one sitting. There's no pausing the timer. Once you start it, it keeps going. And then once the timer runs out, it shuts the test. So let's say you open it at 9.03. It's going to shut it at 10.33 a.m., assuming that 9 a.m. was when you started it. So you just want to be aware of that. It, everything's going to be closed notes. Um, so please be aware of that. And what else did I want to say? Right. You have to upload your written work at the end. So I need to see written work for every single problem. And the way that you're going to provide your written work to me is through OneNote. So OneNote has a great ability um, to just kind of drag and drop images. So what I usually do if I want to insert an image is I go to my OneNote app on my iPhone and I open it up, make sure I log in with my Sanjack email credentials and I'll navigate to my, let's say, exam one solutions page. And once I click in that page, a little camera icon comes up and I can just snap pictures and it just drops them in. So that's the easiest way to do it. And then I'll annotate it and grade it and you'll get your score. The forum. So one part of your grade, in addition to homework and exams, is the forum. So the forum is going to be 5% of your grade. And basically, it's just a discussion forum. So it's right here below the calendar. You can click on it. And what you want to do is contribute meaningful, substantive math conversation or questions. And so you have to contribute either 12 replies or posts, and that will satisfy the 5% requirement for your grade. So homework is 15%. It's just going to be the cumulative sum of all the homework you've done. The forum is 5% and then exams is 80%. So it's like a lot, but don't worry. It's going to get a little bit more complicated and then hopefully it'll, it'll seem good. So I'm going to go over to Blackboard and just kind of look at this rundown here. So the way I'm going to grade your exams is through mastery based grading, which is basically just giving you a mastery level for each problem. So here we can see in the second table, you have a grade of zero through four, and they each mean different things from anywhere from, I have no idea what's happening to like, I could totally teach this on my own. Like I understand it that well. Each test uh, has about between five and six, objectives in it. So we can look at that here in this third table. So we can see that in the first test, equations and inequalities, we have six things that we really want to master. So plotting ordered pairs, graphing equations by plotting and finding intercepts would be one objective. The second objective is expressing linear equations using point slope and slope internet, <laughs> internet intercept, etc. So each of these state an objective that I want all of us to master. On exams, you'll have three questions for each objective. So exam one, there's six objectives. So there's going to be 18 questions. For each objective, the three questions will be graded using this zero to four scale. And then what I do after that is I'll take the average of those three problems, let's say for EQ one, I'll average the two highest scores you got. So basically you're dropping the lowest score on each question per SLO, which is actually kind of cool. So then I'll average the two highest and that will be your grade for that question or that SLO for the exam. So you'll have three chances to demonstrate mastery on every exam. And 
then at the end, having gone through these five exams, we'll have a final exam. And that will be one question from each uh, mastery SLO. So let's say you got on EQ1, your exam grade was it's not great. Maybe it was a two, but you really worked on it over the semester. And so when you take the final, your mastery grade on that was a four, which is great. So what I would do in that instance, if your final mastery grade is higher than your exam grade, I'll just average the two. But let's say you just totally kicked butt on exam one and you got fours across the board on EQ1, EQ2, et cetera, all the way to EQ6. That to me tells me that you don't need to worry about demonstrating your mastery in this topic again. So if your exam score is higher than then your final mastery score, I'll just use your exam score because you've already shown that you kicked butt. So that is mastery based grading in a nutshell. I've put up some examples and kind of written out how it goes. I know we're going to have questions. Feel free to ask them. Um, so that is grading. So we went over OneNote, mom, homework, exams, uploading work to exams, the forum, and how I grade stuff and office hours. So I think that's all I wanted to say. We have class starting on Monday. I'm super excited. If you have questions, definitely email me. I'm kelly.bennett at sjcd.edu. And I look forward to our class.